All right, the last algorithm for this section uh, for an array is a, going to be called a sequential search. We are going to learn how to search through an array to find a value, to see if something's in the array. So if I asked you to look through this list of numbers, and this is a technique I use a lot, if somebody asks you to do a process, how do you do You think about how you do it, and then you can write the algorithm to make the computer do what you do as a human, except the computer does it way faster. If I ask you to look through this list and tell me if the number 37 is in, is in this list of values, this file of values, is 37 in there? Well, how would you do it? You'd say, you go look. That's not 37. That's not 37. That's not 37. That's not 37. That's not. And you check sequentially. You go through and you look at each value. Is that 37? Nope. Is that 37? Nope. And you get to the end and you say, oh, no, 37 is not in that list. Or maybe I asked you to look for 35 and you go through, no, that's not 35. That's not 35. That's not 35. That's not 35. Oh, that's 35. Do you look at the rest of the list? No, you already found out. 35 is in there, and I only asked you yes or no, is it in there? Um, so you say yes, right? So that's what a sequential search is. It's just checking each item one at a time, and we're going to use a loop for this, obviously. Check each item one at a time to see if it matches the thing we're looking for. And you might think, well, that's pretty obvious, but I will tell you that it's not a super efficient search. If you had to do that with a million numbers, even with a computer, it takes a while. Uh, later on, we'll learn faster ways to search through a giant lists, but we're going to use a sequential search for right now. So let's write a method, and instead of putting it down at the bottom, I'm going to just make some space in here so it can be closer to our code up here. Let's make a method to search for a number. What would be a good name for that method? How about search for number? Uh, so let's write it. Private search for number. And we're going to need some parameters in there. If we're going to search for a number in an array, what do we need? Well, we need the array. So I need to let the calling code pass in the array of integers in this case because we're, we're doing integers. I'm going to call it array to search. Okay. But we actually need two things to pass in this time. We also need the thing we're searching for. Array to search. I'm going to search that array and I'm going to for uh, number to find. Those sound like good variable names for me. It must have a return type. Hmm. Did we find the number or not? Yes or no? What do you think a return type could be? Let's make it Boolean. Okay, so let's write our code. First of all, we're going to assume that we didn't find it. So I've created a Boolean variable called found, and we're going to set it to false. Okay, let's just assume we haven't found the number yet, because when we start, we haven't found the number yet. That's a good assumption to make, isn't it? At the end, if that never gets changed to true, we're just going to return that value. Return found. Okay. So, no matter what we do in here, if it never finds the variable and sets this to true, at the end it's just going to return false and say, hey, I didn't find it. Okay. Now, what do we need to do in here? Well, we need a loop.
And let's do this. Let's use a while loop because we're only going to run this loop while we haven't found it. Now, how do I put that condition? Not found. So while we haven't found the thing we're looking for, we're going to keep doing this loop. But we have to be careful because we want to make sure we don't go past the end of the array, too. We can't keep going. Once we hit the end of the array, we're kind of done as well. So there's two things we have to check for. We want to make sure we haven't found it already, because if we found it already, we don't need to keep searching. And we want to make sure we haven't gone past the end of the array. Well, I didn't write this yet because I wanted you to see we're using a while loop because in this case, we don't know how many times this loop is going to run. But we still need, this is one of those cases where we still need an index number. I'm going to declare a variable up here called index. And we'll start it at zero. Obviously, somewhere in our loop, so somewhere in this loop, oops, we're going to have to increase that by one. So as long as index is smaller than our array to search is length. So the two things, if we haven't found the number yet and we, and we haven't searched the whole array, we're going to keep looking. And we're going to keep looking at the next number. Now all we need to do is write our code. If the array to search subindex, okay, so that, that'll be a 0, then a 1, then a 2. If that item is equal to the number defined, what do we want to do? If it's equal to the number we're looking for, that means we found it, right? So at that point, we have to set found to true. Which means, as it comes back around, if we found the number when it comes back around to do this condition, found is true, the not's going to make this false, and since it's an and, if one of the things is false, it can't. The whole thing evaluates as false, and our loop is going to end. So we don't even have to search through the full array. We only have to search till we find it. And if we found it and it's true, and our loop ends, it's going to come down here and it's going to return true. So up here. Let's call this method. So we call the method search for a number. And we have to pass it our array. And up here in this code, our array was called numbers. So we're going to pass it numbers. We also have to pass it the value that we're going to search for. I'm going to search for 37 because that's the example I used when I was going through the code. Okay. That's great, and that's going to return a true or false, but we haven't displayed it, right? So again, let's put all this inside, and we'll add it to our display. This display dot items dot add and we'll add that to our display at the end to see if the number 37 was there. It's just going to put a true or false on the end of our items list in this case. Now we could write an if statement. If this ret if this return true, actually let's do that. If and we call this method And then we're going to add the words 
found it. That might be a more creative way to do this. A more realistic way and user friendly. So if we search for this number and we find it, we're going to just add found it else. We'll display not found. And as I type this piece of code, I start thinking, well, that's a lot of code. Maybe that should be its own method and displaying whether or not the number is found could be its own method if we wanted it to. So search for number and we'll display found it if it finds it and not found if it doesn't. Looking for 37, go. Highest number is 50 and then it says found, not found. Hmm, let's look for 35, because we know 35 is in there. We hit go, and it says, found it. Great, we found it. How useful is that? I don't know. Where was it at in the list? I don't know. Maybe we should try and keep track of where it's at in the list. Let's declare. So I'm going to modify this now. So this is a basic sequential search that just says true or false. I want to modify it so it can tell me where it was in the list. You're going to need this for your assignment this week. So I'm going to declare another variable called position equals, and I'm going to start at negative one. Position equals negative one. Now I still need my found variable because I because I don't want my loop to go as long as we haven't found it. But once we found it, I'm going to set found to true, but I'm also going to set my position equal to the current index that we're from our loop because that will tell me the position where I found that va that variable that value. Right. So hey, I found the number. I'm going to set found to true and I'm going to record whatever my index was when I found it because that tells me the position in the array. Well, how do I get this information back out of this method? I'm not going to return found anymore. I'm going to return the position. So this needs to be an int. Why? Why does that work? How, do, how can it still work? Because now when I use my if statement up here to search for my numbers, it's not Boolean anymore. But I can check to see if it's negative one, because if it goes through this whole thing and never finds it, my position is going to be, it's going to return negative one for my position. Well, an array only has positive values, right? For its index number, 0 up to 1 minus the length. So if it returns negative 1, we can assume that means it didn't find it. So if I look for this, and the value it returns equals negative 1, then I didn't find it, right? Oh, wait a minute. I don't want to look to see if it's greater than 1. I'm just going to say if it's greater than or equal to 0. If it's less than or equal to zero, I'm going to display not found. Interesting. Let's try it. It found it. I do it with 37. It didn't find it. So it's still working with the negative one and positive one, but I still didn't display the position. Let's separate. Um, there's a couple ways we could do this. 
I could declare another position value up here. I'm going to call it found at. Int found at equals this. And then substitute found at. Okay. So this is going to take the value that gets returned and store it in a variable. And if that variable is greater than or equal to zero, we're going to say found it at position. Put a space there. Now concatenate on found at. Not found with 37. Let's do it with 35. Found at position six. Okay, I want I want you to think about something here. Um, I didn't want to do that. Stop debugging here. Position six. One, two, three. Four, five, six. It wasn't in position six, it was in position seven. Okay. Think about it from the standpoint of a real user. If we were looking through a list and they wanted to know what position it is, if we were looking for 25, we wouldn't tell them, hey, we found that at position zero. We'd say, hey, it was the first one in the list. So computers count starting at zero. People count starting at one. So if I want this to be user friendly, and this is important for your assignment this week, uh, if I want it to be user friendly and I really want to tell somebody where they ranked in the list or where their name was found in the in the case of what you're going to be doing this week, I probably should add one to the position I found it at. Actually, maybe it's better. Yeah, we'll do it here. For our display to the user, we'll add one to it because that's more user friendly. Found it position, <laughs> what happened? Position 61, that's not what I wanted at all. It concatenated the one onto the six. Maybe I better put some parentheses around it to force it to do the math first. Found at position seven. So there was a simple search algorithm that returned a boolean. I modified it to actually return the position. Assuming a negative position, if we didn't find it, allows us to still test to see if the number was found or not, but it also gives us a, an a opportunity to say where it was found. Okay, so two different ways to do a sequential search. One returning a boolean, one returning an int.